Hi, I'm Michael Barrett with Neighborhood TV. And over the past year and a half, you've probably noticed how popular social districts have become in an increasing number of cities and towns across North Carolina. They essentially serve as defined outdoor areas, typically downtown, where people can drink alcoholic beverages that were sold by permitted establishments within the zone. More municipalities north of Charlotte are creating them. So I talked to officials in a couple of cities here about how the special districts are serving the community. Cities north of Charlotte, such as Statesville, Salisbury, Mooresville, and Huntersville, have already carved out their own social districts. Davidson just this week established two distinct districts around the center of town, and China Grove leaders are also giving the idea strong consideration. After the state passed the law allowing social districts in September of 2021, in an effort to help the hospitality industry recover from the COVID-19 pandemic, Kannapolis became the first city to establish its own district just weeks after the bill was signed. The city had actually already been pondering such a concept as part of its downtown revitalization plan. What, what have you noticed in terms of positive effects along the lines of business growth or increased business you know, in the district? In the, have you noticed any tangible increase in foot traffic or business growth along those lines since this happened? Um, it, you know, that's hard to gauge because we, we were starting from a zero sum game when we, you know, we, we were at essentially 5% occupancy downtown when we finished our revitalization project to, you know, 90% now. So we, we, we don't really know if this had <laughs> that much of an effect or not because there were so many other factors, but I think there's other factors probably. This is just one of those things that make it especially for a food and beverage business that it's just one more good reason to come to downtown Kannapolis because it does exist. It, I'm not sure it's the deciding factor, but it's a factor maybe. Kim Atkins, executive director of the Mooresville Downtown Commission, said there was near unanimous support among downtown business owners for creating a social district after the legislation was passed, and the city began setting it up almost a year ago. Since then, she said the visible benefits have been tied to providing more options for businesses and downtown visitors, while also giving the town another marketing tool. The benefit that I see is the flexibility. Um, we're still seeing that this is mostly used during events, um, but, you know, for someone to be able to, um, you know, walk into a business and um, w grab a beer or whatever they want and then walk outside and experience part of the event and, you know, maybe the rest of the family's drinking soda, you know, it just provides that flexibility. And, you know, it's so new. So people are like, oh, I can really do this. I mean, we've had events where people walk up to one of our police officers and go, can we bring a beer outside now? <laughs> you know? So um, so I, I think just the newness of it, people are like, oh, wow, this is really cool. Um, but I don't know that there's tangible dollars or, um, you know, the other reason that we felt like this would be a good thing is just, Again, we can market it and it's something else that we add to our toolbox to say, hey, come to Mooresville and check this out. Have there been any challenges or kinks that you've had to work out along the way? Really none. I mean, surprisingly, we've had, you know, one or two situations of drunken disorderly, you know, but we have a baseball, you know, a, a, a baseball stadium in the middle of our downtown with a lot of people that drink alcohol during the games and come out. And you know, so to have, you know, something like that is not unusual. So I, I don't think it has anything to do whatsoever with the social district in our situation. Kim Atkins said they've also seen no significant challenges or problems with the social district to date in Mooresville. No, and we've actually, um, you know, I, even before this was passed, I worked closely with the police department. Um, you know, there's statistics on, you know, the number of calls they get and from where and what type of um, you know, incidents they may get called for, and, and we have not seen any any change because of the social district. What what advice would you give to any other cities or towns that are maybe on the fence still about enacting you know such a district? I, I would say that one of the biggest things is there's a partnership between police departments and other city folks and the business owners. That's critical. You know, a lot of communication, a lot of education. Make sure everybody's on the page, same page about what it is and what it isn't, um, and what everybody's rights and responsibilities are. At the end of the day, it's really up to the businesses to do the right thing, and, and ours do, um, about the, the different regulations, you know, the cups that have to be used and what they have to say and 
those sorts of things. And, you know, their, their ABC permits are on the line for some of this. So if they get sloppy, you know, then that's to their detriment. But I, I think that's the biggest thing is just make sure your business owners um, and your police departments are, are all in sync about this. And, you know, if that happens, there really aren't going to be any problems. That's our experience after, you know, a year and a half of doing this.